Hello, everyone. Nice to see you. I wasn't here this morning. Uh, nice to see you all back here. So now you will have the pleasure to listen to two presentations by me. Uh, so we have 20 minutes dedicated. And uh, I got this uh, assignment of presenting uh, data driven design, which is, uh, if you think about back to do what we are presenting today on the different research track, it's not really linked to our research track. It's more a topic that we are, it is cross disciplinary among the three research tracks that we have. Had. And I decided to bring up a presentation of two cases that we are running that there, that we run there. And uh, not choosing randomly, I choose the first one because this is the one we run with GKM in the beginning, when the one we got a uh, research award at the International Conference of Design, uh, which has been a little bit the eye opener on the area of data driven design. And uh, here you will see some hints on what has been done later on, even for, compared to what Rush has presented. And the second case is that with uh, model construction equipment. And that has led to the EVA 100 award that we got this year for that, uh, that specific project. So this is a, the oldest one, which you can't so say because it's old. It's still quite actual research, but we done it before and then it actually led to more research afterwards. So what have we, do, what have we, have we done with data driven design? We've done a case study quite long uh, on different aspects with JKN. And in this specific case, we will work on a turbine real structure, uh, which is uh, the red component you see there. What we wanted to do it was to integrate value and sustainability in a model-based decision support system. And here comes myself in from a value perspective, and there was a uh, work from uh, uh, Sophie's group and Sophie as well, and uh, machine learning with uh, uh, we see as well into that. And so we gathered together, we ran this case study for a while, and we want to use machine learning to enable data analysis, try to find correlation that were not that evident, and create surrogate models to visualize the result. And I'm going to explain you what I mean with this. Essentially, we started with the need of exploring the design space. And when I say exploring the design space, I mean, I come in with a concept and I want to explore hundreds of different alternatives of this concept in few minutes, hours. But I want to go broad and understand what is changing if I change of more parameter, if I change of more detail there. I want hundreds of them to run. And, but we want to do that by integrating value and sustainability perspective. It is not new to do design space exploration. It is not new to run simulation design space exploration. What was new was about thinking about what is the value we have to think about that. How do we integrate sustainability in that? And especially quantifying the link between them. So if I change something mechanically, can I get a reply on what is the value, what is the sustainability impact of that? How are, how are the, those linked together? And now we can quickly scale it up to hundreds of solutions. So we had three essentially research stream into that and going briefly through this. This is another picture that only me can understand. Uh, but still, there's a lot of definition of value criteria. This is a work that started back in 2010 with JKM. So this is not just came up randomly. So the definition of different value criteria that we wanted to understand and work with uh, in one stream for the value of the design side. We had the second stream, and here is probably you know, some of the things I've been presenting this morning from the sustainability development side about understanding indicators, leading criteria, and what is that is relevant in that specific aspect for that specific case study. Those studies were going on since a while, and then we actually decided what if we link this with data driven, a data driven aspect related to machine learning algorithms. So, how, what is it happening to bring in some data science here? Yeah. How far do you know what, this is, what can we do? So we wanted to use surrogate models for value and sustainability, allowing to, this, to run a design space exploration. There's been some tests about which were the best algorithms. Now I'm not the most expert on data science here, but we have been collaborating with them, looking at different algorithms and giving the best result out of that. So to make 
long story short, giving uh, giving out the overall picture of everything that happened and the final result. So started by the idea of having design space exploration and the design variation. In here we we talked about at the beginning was I think was 128, then we actually increased more and more. Uh, this is nothing that we were expert to. This is actually full expertise for GKM, design space exploration, geometrical definitions, component light evaluation, thermal analysis, strength and stiffness, so all things that GKM were much better than us in doing, and they are here. Uh, what to bring on this? Well, there was the value-driven design part. What if, based on different configuration here, we can actually quantify what we call elities at that time, so survivability, commonality, scalability of solution. Uh, nowadays, we tend to call it changeability uh, in what Raj has presented before. How, how can we quantify this? And what, how can we actually bring in cost and performance of value analysis? So operational cost, customer revenue models, even manufacturing feasibility models or maintenance cost model. And this, we wanted to have this assessment for each of the single design in the design space exploration. So 180, 100, you know, 200 different cost revenue models or result from cost revenue models. We implemented, as you see here, machine learning is some of them. Uh, just to give you an example, I mean, how do you calculate a maintenance model? A maintenance model is actually something that we've been more quite a lot from research in Munich, in Germany. So we actually borrowed the work they did building, a, they have essentially a huge database of maintenance a given to, uh, that has been done on aircraft based on different weight and mass and everything that they write these functions that should sort of indicate you when, what's the probability that you actually get the maintenance uh, given a specific configuration. So we borrow that work, that work essentially. And we run customer revenue models, for instance, by using some cer certain quantification parameter based on the mass of the overall engine and cascade it to the mass of the, the aircraft, et cetera. I'm not, not going to the detail, but uh, that's how it worked. In parallel, we did sustainability assessment by identifying strategic long-term criteria, leading criteria and indicators, and then trying to model sustainability in terms of cost assessment model and systems analysis. Those things have been done 2018, have been evolved a little bit more now. Ultimately, leading to a final digital model, of course, both descriptive and predictive, uh, allowing to visualize physical properties of the component, cost, value, and sustainability impact. How did we do that essentially on a qualitative scale based on the sustainability impact and uh, in some aspect qualitative as well for uh, the value perspective. So each of the box you see here, this one, or this one, and a couple of the sustainability one, has a number at the end for each of the line of design space exploration, telling you this is the score, either quantitative or qualitative, that, that specific design number 25 as compared to 26, 27, 28. And then we visualize it in this way. Uh, we parallel coordinate here. Uh, what is this meaning? Each line is that stuff here and then down there is a single design that we are exploring. That there's a specific feature here, you have in, for instance, geometrical features, uh, you have type of manufacturing, weight was this, a cost predicted cost for each of these lines and the sustainability compliant for each. So you have designs that goes up to in between six and seven of the sustainability compliance scale and others that goes down to three or four. You don't get the detail from this, but you understand which are the design that you might want to know more or you want to investigate more. Based on this, we actually enhance it by using surrogate models. Surrogate models applies mathematical or data science to existing data to, uh, with a certain reliability, build a space in which you can simulate different configuration that were not included at the beginning, but you assess through data science that they will learn more or less into that. So all the new 
line that you see here, starting from the top, are actually design cases which were not simulated at the beginning, but came up from the result of surrogate modeling of the design space exploration. So there are simulated results, not simulated, not brought in at the beginning as input, but obtained as essentially applying the science on the one we had, and then adding, we have a certain degree of reliability to different aspects from the, on the design space. So exploring a much wider set of uh, design projects through the same thing. Yeah. Okay, so in a nutshell, we use these diagram, dynamic parallel diagrams to do some interactive analysis in the design team. It does not give you the answer which one is the best, but it gives you some indication on which direction should take. You might want to tell you to look specific so you can compare to another. And we end up simulating or sur making surrogate models of hundreds of different design configurations with some indication of sustainability and cost and value. There are actually many more lines in this picture, but I have to cut it out otherwise. Uh, many more columns, sorry. Otherwise, it would be too big. So, on this case, brief reflection, com we complement the mechanical simulation result with value sustainability. There's a lot to be done. Uh, we had machine learning algorithm algorithms helped a lot with both dealing with both qualitative and quantitative in these models. Uh, even just because we visualize quantitative data together with qualitative scales. Um, that usually does not make decision to come easier when you have this kind of visualization. But it was a step further compared to essentially not having a real number to work on, nothing to really work on. That was all about the first case on GKM. It was the second beginning of this journey toward data-driven design. And that led to some reflection more on the other case that we have. This case, in, this was the most recent with global construction equipment. And that was, as I said, the one we got uh, awarded this year for uh, the EVO 100. It is, in some, for some reason, quite similar because we're still dealing with exploring a lot of designs. But we have a completely different context. Here we are in the context of electrification. But Aerospace might have that as well, uh, and autonomy. And we have about the whole system to be designed. It's not just one component. It's about designing machines for autonomy electrification that needs to work in a system like a quarry or a mine and integrate all together, giving out an assessment of value and eventual sustainability of the overall system, not just of, the, of one machine. Because here we have multiple machines working together. So here, the, the goal of the project was very similar. We had to trade off economic and environmental performances in the context of, of electromobility and autonomous machines. Uh, we had essentially running simulation through systems of systems, digital twins, or what we call digital twins, and I explain you how that works. And we have different layers of simulation that need to be combined in this case, starting from the overall picture, so what we call digital twin of the overall operational scenario in the mind. Uh, but that still needs to be built up by different modules. Starting from module one, which is the vehicle, very much similar to what uh, could be a component of an engine for JKN. We started by modeling vehicle geometry, vehicle dynamics, some efficiency mapping, mapping, battery resistance, different parameters. Uh, very much similar to the moving, I mean, the, diff the candle was moving that Marco presented in the morning I mean, with different features of the vehicle. But if you want to build digital twin of the overall side, then just looking for one specific machine is not enough because you have multiple machines of those. Then you need to think about the system, what we call what we have called systems of systems in this uh, in this work, which is yes, vehicle one, but then we have vehicle two, vehicle three, vehicle four, five, six, and might have different configurations. So we all need to take care of those. All these machines actually work in what you call a 
product service system digital thing. That means that, well, we have services that are linked to this. We have infrastructure, we have a charging station, we have a specific place where we extract material or we crush the materials. There's the old service infrastructure and system around that. And how we did that is about modeling and simulating on, in this case, MATLAB, single vehicles, and then integrated them on discrete event simulation in our overall systems, the digital uh, twin on the side. With two different software we have mentioned already. Once, last, uh, last but not least, then we have the operational context, the data part. So path elevation profile, temperature, weather, geolocalization, or where you use the machine, those are impacting a lot of performances. Uh, if I'm extracting material in Kiruna or if I'm extracting material in South Africa, I have to completely different soil, temperature, weather, uh, and then you have to include, include those data simulations as well. For doing so, we actually got data. We call it data-driven design because we extract data, for instance, from uh, altitude. This is the typical sort of, uh, if you're looking, you know, uh, bike competition, the typical altitude that you have to follow, for instance, for a machine. Mapping all, getting all this data, creating profiles, the one that uh, Raj has shown about optimal velocity on different tracks, deriving then how much the battery should be charged or can charge in different conditions. And based on that, getting a what we really like as engineers, the Pareto frontier of optimal designs. So different design, feasible designs and optimal designs that should be the one that we can implement in our, in our system based on what you see in the top there, which is all the data that you get from the operation of the operation of the machine and all the data we have for the context, for the specific side of mind. So fully customized solution for a specific site. Can go on forever, talk about this. This is just, Summary so it should be in, in IDAF saying that we have vehicle simulation, site simulation, talking together, getting data from external from the context in order to allow design trade off at the end about visibility and about sensibility analysis of which level you want, which vehicle you want to deliver, and which one you wish to modify. All together brought in to the first iteration of visualization scenario is a pretty simple GPS map. Similar model, but we have seen already what is going to happen on the simulation side. 